Greetings! This tutorial introduces some basic features of bridge petri nets. We start with a very simple model that consists of three components that each can be in three possible states. So, in order to denote possible states of each component, we'll introduce what's called places and denote it with these large circles. Um, and we will introduce the names for this. So first will correspond to each component in operational state then we have need service trying to keep spelling going here all right so we have this finally the third state or the place corresponding to the state will be uh, serviced so now we have three components and originally they are in operational state and then denoted by small field circles or if we decide to choose we can choose other um, icons for individual object but the key is that we have those guys inside of operational state and now uh, we have transitions so we introduce transition between the states now that if we select a place, for example, we can move this name around here and we can move it a little bit to make it a little bit nicer. So now we can introduce the uh, properties for each transition. So let's say this transition will select exponential and let's say we'll just choose the uh, transition rate here. Uh, transition from need service to service will make it instantaneous so we'll select a very small fixed delay here and finally for servicing we just say that it will be also fixed and the value will be for simplicity let's say five hours or five units whatever units we're using at the time so now uh, we need to introduce sensor which basically the um, specify which place we want to know some some values of some some statistics that we want to collect and after that we can uh, check out our simulation menu first we can look at the uh, one step at a time and so you can see the time moves and we can see what happens there uh, we can see that each token moves independently of each other uh, and that's fundamental property of uh, bridge petri nets where uh, each component is operating kind of in parallel unless we explicitly introduce dependence and this dependence we introduce by means of triggers inhibitors and enablers and for example we can introduce some constraint here and say that we can only serve one unit at a time so we'll introduce inhibitor and as a result when we try to simulate we can observe that um, when we have one unit serviced the other one needs to wait note that only when it's done immediately the other one comes in remember that this transition is instantaneous so there are no delays so now we can uh, run simulation um, and in order for us to understand what's happened with the simulation we can introduce some parameters so this is the Monte Carlo simulation tells us how many runs we have uh, then we have the simulation time so the end of the simulation is 50 whatever units we choose number of time steps this is for reporting when we generate a report we can select how many um, time steps we want to have the values of relevant statistics so uh, that's what what this stipulates and final animation time if we animate a single run we can see how slow and or how fast it happens so we can run Monte Carlo simulation and we can observe what happens to the uh, to the sensor we can see that we have about 92 percent probability 92 percent uh, chances that um, that we have at least one token or at least one component operational and um, we that corresponds to the threshold zero uh, so there's a strict inequality here so for example we can introduce another sensor that will 
see what are the chances that we have more than one unit operating two or more at the same time and we can introduce another sensor for example that would will evaluate what's the average number of operating end it is here so this is start and end time and threshold and delay are not relevant for this mean token so once we introduce that we can rerun the simulation um, and see what happens as a result so we can see that we have 92 percent chance that we have at least one unit operational 57 percent chance or 58 percent chance that uh, we have at least two units operational and on average we have 2.8 units operational okay so that was in the beginning so we wanted to actually to run it for the whole duration of the time so let me rerun it and you can see that the value actually now we run it for the whole duration so you can see that actually it should be 1.765 because we first we run it only in the very beginning so we had high chances that we had all three operational before any failures occur so we can select the start and the end time here so now we can for example see what changes occur if um, we allow two units to be serv serviced at the same time so we change the multiplicity of this inhibitor and we can rerun the simulation and we can observe what what the changes that that occurred after that we can see that now the probability that we have at least one will go to 96 at least two to 73 percent and we also can see that the average number of operational unit increases as well to two that's it for the first uh, tutorial and in the second tutorial we will consider a more uh, complex example thank you so much